TD-139, a potential therapeutic for IPF? Idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, or IPF, is a lung disorder characterized by a chronic and progressive scarring of lung tissue. It often leads to difficulty breathing, which worsens with time. The cause for this disease is currently unknown and treatment options are currently limited. The two main pharmacological treatment options for this disorder are Aspirate and Ofev. Both these drugs are anti-scarring medications which serve to slow the progression of the disease. One of the main caveats to this approach are the side effects associated with taking these drugs. Aspirate, which is made by the pharmaceutical company Genitech Incorporated, is associated with side effects such as stomach upset and skin rashes. On the other hand, Ofev, which is made by the pharmaceutical company Boehringer Ingelheim, is commonly associated with diarrhea and hypertension. However, ongoing research presents us with the new promising alternative, known as TD-139. The creation of TD-139 was a joint effort by two teams of researchers, one at Lund University in Sweden and the other at Edinburgh University in Scotland. It is currently in phase two of clinical trials, which are being conducted by Galecto Biotech, a pharmaceutical company created by researchers who are interested in the progression and treatment of IPF. In 2014, TD-139 was approved for further research in patients. So what is TD-139 and how can it help? TD-139 is an orally inhaled small molecule that stops galactin-3 from working in the lungs. This helps to stop the scarring of the lungs. You might be wondering, how can TD-139 help reduce the excessive scarring that takes place in the lungs of IPF patients? In IPF, progressive scarring of the lungs is created when the lungs fail to repair themselves correctly. A cell type known as fibroblasts begin to migrate into the lungs and transform into myofibroblasts, which are cells that produce extra collagen, which is an important component of connective tissue. This leads to a buildup of cells, extracellular matrix proteins, and collagen in the lung tissue, leading to progressive scarring. In order to move into the lungs and contribute to this buildup, fibroblasts need the help of a transforming growth factor known as TGF-beta. TGF-beta gives fibroblasts the energy they need to move into the lungs while supporting the growth of collagen and the creation of other matrix proteins. So how can researchers interfere in this process? We can't inhibit TGF-beta because it's produced by many cell types and it's involved in other structural processes. However, we can stop TGF-beta in the lungs specifically by controlling other molecules that are involved with TGF-beta activity. TD-139 utilizes this method by stopping a molecule known as galactin-3. Galactin-3 can control TGF-beta and bring more inflammatory molecules to the lungs to promote lung scarring. By stopping galactin-3, researchers can control production of TGF-beta directly in the lungs. This stops further scarring and helps to reduce fibrosis. To better understand this, think of the interaction between galactin-3 and TGF-beta like that between a lock and key. Galactin-3 is important for the regulation of TGF-beta activity. So how does TD-139 affect this process? TD-139 functions to stop galactin-3 from controlling TGF-beta activity, thereby preventing further scarring of lung tissue. Currently, the drug has shown great results. After only two weeks, patients who had taken TD-139 experienced significantly lower levels of both TGF-beta and galactin-3 in the lungs. One of the most promising results researchers discovered was that there are currently no major side effects present in patients during phase 1 and phase 2 of the clinical trials. Animal studies using mice showed similar results as they also found that drugs that block galactin-3 were able to block TGF-beta production. TD-139 is still in its second phase of clinical trials and research is still ongoing. If TD-139 can successfully pass the third phase, it may be available for purchase in one to four years. However, because research is still ongoing, this means the results so far may not be definite and could still be changed as more data is analyzed. Aside from TD-139, there is still hope for the future of IPF treatment. 
Many other treatments such as regenerative therapies are still being researched. Talk to your doctor if you're interested in learning more about getting involved in clinical trials, learning about future treatments, or learning about IPF. Check the description box below for more resources on TD139. Thank you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe to the Demystifying Medicine channel to learn more.